Welcome back, folks. As promised, I'm going to take you through my first month of ownership of the Woodland Mills Grind Lux 4000, the sawmill blade sharpener. This thing has turned out to be a really useful tool for me. Originally, way back when I got my HM130 sawmill, I didn't really think I would need a, a blade sharpener. But then after ordering new blades at about $22.50, give or take, per, uh, per blade, I decided that I'm going to pay for myself to buy a sharpener. And uh, I think that was a good decision. So first things first, I got this thing set up in my first video. I unboxed it and you guys saw that process. That took me just under an hour. After getting it set up, I followed the manual to a T to make sure that I'm doing everything correctly. Now, my impressions with using the manual is it is pretty easy. The instructions that are in there are very straightforward. It's not a huge long novel, so it should be easy for all of you guys to get the uh, get the ball rolling and get this thing set up and cutting perfectly. Now, I haven't had any growing pains with this, meaning I haven't screwed up any blades with it because I've done what the manual has said. I started taking a very little bit of material off per pass, and sometimes I've had to go around the blade more than once. Now, as I'm getting better and as my uh, sort of uh, eye for quality gets better, I may be able to do this pass um, this sharpening pass in one go, but for now it's taking me about two go arounds to fully get the full tooth profile ground down. Now if we have a look at the sawmill. First thing you're going to notice here is it's a little bit dusty and that's probably the only thing I'm really noticing. Everything else is working perfectly. I'm keeping the nice tension on the blade. I'm making sure that this knob here is set perfectly and I'm also making sure that the depth for this grind wheel going through the tooth is set up perfectly as well. Now, in my experience, because I use the same type of blade every single time, I don't really have to make many adjustments once it's set up for this particular type of blade. The settings I have for this blade, now this is a Lennox blade sold by Woodland Mills. What I have set up is a 10 degree, 10 degree uh, grind. So if you look at the very back here, you guys may be able to see down there. You guys see the numbers there? 7, 10, and 14. I've got it set up for 10 degrees. From what I can see, that was very, very close to what the angle was originally on the blade when it was shipped to me. And so I don't have to take too much material off if I just stick with that 10 degree. Now, what I'm noticing as I go along here is I am getting a razor sharp edge. So you'll see there, see how it's nice and shiny? That's a razor edge. It's very sharp. However, I'm having to make a second pass because I'm not quite able to get the full gullet there on the first pass. You can see how much I've been able to get. I need to do one more pass to get the full gullet. Now that's, uh, that's probably the reality of using a blade that's very well worn. Keep in mind this blade I probably should have sharpened a long time ago, but I actually thought I was going to be throwing these blades out. And at the last minute, I decided to uh, open up my wallet and get one of these sharpeners. And so I'm trying to revive this blade. If I would have sharpened it earlier on in its life, I probably would only have to do one revolution or one pass to get a full sweeping sharpen of the entire tooth. But in this case, I got to do two. So such is life. Some things I notice as I go here. The most important thing you're going to notice is there is two main adjustments. Let's get it put back here. There we go. So there's two main adjustments here. This one, which controls how far forward the tooth gets pushed every revolution. And this one here that controls the height of the grind wheel. Now, once you get those two adjustments into place, I find it's pretty much self-explanatory. You just let the machine do its business. Getting this set up properly is simply a matter of leaving the grinding wheel off so making it so it doesn't spin, you can see there's two separate controls. Just leave the grind wheel off and leave this, uh, what do you call this, advancing arm, leave this one moving. So you can then look right at the wheel and see how it follows the profile of the tooth before you're confident that you can turn it on and start grinding. That's a lot of words there, a lot of explanation. I'm sure you guys are probably wanting me to do something and see it in action. And so we'll do that in just a minute. Some other things I just want to point out before we fire her up is this. You see here, the blade has to go around in a circle, obviously, to get all the teeth sharpened. The addition of these bearings here, and this came like it from Woodland Mills, the addition of those bearings on both the arms really makes that blade turn, and I don't ever have to touch this. The setup here, 
I never have to touch it. Once it gets going, I kind of just mull around the shop and let it do its thing. In terms of powering this thing, how I have it set up is probably like many of you. I've got it set up to a 12 volt battery and I actually have it hooked up to my trickle charger. So what I like to do is by keeping it hooked up to the trickle charger, I never really run the power down on this. Not like it uses much power, but uh, that's my setup. So this last thing I'm gonna show you here, this is essentially the uh, sort of a rudimentary uh, piece of metal that stops the uh, sharpener once it gets back to this position you started. So this, uh, this turned out to be a very useful bit. The other useful bit that um, I found in the first month is this. So after I go through and sharpen, oh, say two blades or so, maybe even one, I go and I check the profile of the blade. And this is the profile, um, excuse me, the profile of the sharpening stone. I uh, use this in order to check that. And so basically you flip it up and you can take the bit like that and you can see how close it matches up. And in this case, I just profiled this and therefore it matches perfectly. So I find after a blade or so, I make sure to always do that to uh, guarantee that I'm getting the right sharpen. Anyways, let's talk, let's try this and I'll show you exactly how easy it is to use once you get the height and the advancer adjusted. All right, well, I know it's adjusted properly because I've done a few sharpens, a few, uh, a few go rounds with the, uh, with the sharpener. So let's just fire it up. What I'm going to do first is fire up the grinding wheel. And you can hear it's nice and quiet and that's kind of nice. And then we'll fire up the advancer. I think that's called an advancer. You can correct me down below. Okay, so you guys can see there, I'm just getting the very edge of the gullet. Now keep in mind, this is the first go around for this, uh, these particular teeth here. So let me, uh, let me zoom in here, you guys can see. Have a good look there. Okay, so you guys can see here, I'm taking off the lower part of the gullet. And I'm not quite touching the whole tooth edge, the, excuse me, the whole edge of the gullet, and so I'll get it on the next one. You guys can see the result here. If you look back, it's sharp. All right, and I just checked this to make sure the tension is uh, appropriate. You don't want it too tight, you don't want it too loose. It's kind of hard to explain. You want it just so that the blade doesn't wobble. And it's basically as simple as that. And you're gonna notice here, the stop, uh, what do you call that, the stop arm? It's about to hit, and it's going to stop exactly where I need it to. So exactly where I began, and you guys can watch and see how this works. Okay, and you're probably wondering why it ground so much in the last one. Well, to be honest with you, this blade is missing a few teeth. And if we flip that up there, see right there how it's missing a few teeth. So because of that, uh, it ended up having a slightly different push. Like keep in mind this arm, it tends to grip onto the, uh, the previous tooth, right? It tends to grip onto that face and push it. Well, if there's no face to grip onto, it's not gonna push it exactly where it should. And as a result, it ground a little bit different in that gullet than it did the previous one where there's a full tooth. Okay, so as you can see, this thing automatically shuts off. Not a very complex system there. It is very, very um, consistent. I guess that'd be my first point. Very, very consistent. There's not a lot of stuff to do once you get this and this adjusted. Once that's adjusted and you know you got a good profile on your blade, it's more or less one of those set it and forget it type deals. So now that I know I've gone all the way around at least once, what I'm going to do, I'm going to take this off for now and I'm going to move this out of the way. You guys can see here, oops, you guys can see here, there's a little bit of resistance. You don't want too much. So I might even back that off a touch. 
so that's pretty good it's not going to wobble back and forth you can tighten this a little even okay so that's good what i'm going to do i can pick any tooth along here i think they recommend woodland mills i think they recommend you pick the tooth right near the weld um, for our case i don't know where the weld is off the top of my head but let's just assume we were going to start at uh, let's just say this given tooth what i like to do is take a marker and of course i don't have one handy Go grab one. All right, so I like to just mark the tooth I'm going to start on. And uh, let's say I was going to start on this one. Okay, just put a mark there. And then um, once that mark gets out to here, you can put this back on it, like so. And then it'll stop uh, where you need it to. Anyways, what I would do first, because I know I have a little bit more to grind. I would go and I would try to set up the height so it touches the entire gullet of the tooth. Now, in order to get it into the right position, you can turn it on here. And we'll let it advance one more. And then I'll shut it off. So what we know is now this tooth is at the very furthest position it's going to be pushed with this current adjustment. So now we can take the height adjustment on the grinding wheel and I'm going to let it come down just a touch. Let's see what happens. So I'm going to turn on the advancer again and I'm watching to see how much of the gullet it touches. And in this case, it's not touching any of it. And so that tells me that I need to loosen off this knob a little bit to make the height of the head of the, uh, the grinder go down a little further. We'll try it on the next tooth here and watch very carefully. Okay, I'm not quite touching. And so we'll make another adjustment. I'll just drop it down. And they recommend you go down in small increments. Let's just zoom in so you guys can see. I'm gonna watch this blade, the uh, grinding wheel rather. I'm gonna watch it to see if it bottoms out in the gullet because I want it to get the just the last bit of that gullet ground before I call it good. So let's look. Oh, geez, that's close. Very, very close. So I'm going to drop it down one more time. Okay, and we'll watch on the next one here. Okay, it's close, but no cigar. And so I'm actually going to... Oh, I'm noticing something, and you guys may notice this as well. So I was loosening this, but you know what was happening? The top knob was actually lifting up, so it was coming off this shaft as opposed to the shaft turning. So uh, let's tighten that back up and make sure the shaft turns this time. There we go, you can see the shaft turning now. Now we're cooking. Okay, let's try that again. Okay, you guys hear that? You can actually hear the disc, or the grinding wheel, starting to touch, create a bit of friction on the bottom of that gullet. That's what I'm listening for. I'm gonna lower it down a little further and try it one more time. Okay, that sounds good. So I heard a bit of resistance there. I heard a bit of grinding, a bit of this wheel touching the bottom of the gullet. So I'm gonna try it. Okay, now uh, just keep in mind where you're starting. Obviously this mark is not gonna work. So we would re remark it wherever we start. So let's fire up. Okay, and that was actually quite good. I got most of the gullet there. Most of it there. Gee, I'm gonna call that pretty well good. You guys see there? What I might do, just gonna stop the advancer for a sec and stop the wheel. I'm just gonna lower this down a quarter of a turn more, like so. And we're gonna see what that looks like. So here we go. That's the money shot. Okay, you guys see that? It's ground pretty much all the gullet. Now keep in mind, we don't want to grind up the backside of the tooth. We don't want to grind that. 
Okay, so I'm gonna call that good. All right, so as you guys can tell, I've now got about 20 minutes to wait. I need to pay special attention where I started. I don't wanna grind it twice. So I'll mark where we started. I'll let this thing go around and uh, then we'll be good to go. And this blade will be heading to the sawmill. So there's my two cents about this Grindlux 4000 by Woodland Mills. I think this thing's a pretty solid product. And to be honest with you, it's not overly complicated once you get the hang of it. There's really only a few adjustments on it. And once you understand what those adjustments do, you can really dial it in. And then you're pretty much letting this thing do its, uh, do its job. If you're in the market for one of these, Definitely shop around because I've looked at all the manufacturers and this one is a very good, uh, very good value in my opinion. I would, I would probably like to have a really expensive one, but like many of you, I'm a hobbyist Sawyer and so I can't justify spending two, three or four thousand dollars on a setter and a sharpener system. So this one at 849 Canadian is uh, definitely a bit closer to, uh, to my budget. So that's going to do it for me here today. If you guys have had one of these for a few years, I'd love to hear about your experiences. If you see anything I'm doing and you think that, hey, I know a little bit, uh, a little bit about this and I could uh, help make um, these blades a bit sharper for me, well, I'd, I'd love to hear that as well. So guys, thanks for being here as always. Hope you're all well out there and I look forward to seeing you all next time. <music>